dream. You are falling, lost in the listening distance, as dark locks in. <gasps> Nightfall. Good evening. Tonight we would request your attendance at a formal ball given to honor the most important guest of all. The setting is London, the year 1750. The play based on a short story by Peter S. Beagle and dramatized by Len Peterson is called The Guest of Honor. Parties. Parties. I'm so bored with parties. But it's expected, Lady Neville. But I open the season with a gala that leaves everyone gasping. Lorimond, you're the poet. Inspire me. Oh, let's see. Um, poison champagne every fifth glass. <laughs> Milady, you'd be the talk of London oh, and Edinburgh. Oh, serious, Lorimond. Now, whom might I invite who wouldn't bore me silly? Hmm. The king, of course, and uh, the archbishop. <laughs> Georgie Porgy, when he goes on and on and on in his German strudel English about his mistresses and his money, my feet go to sleep. As for the archbishop of Canterbury, all that talk about altar boys. But you have inspired me, Lorimond. Someone I'd not thought of. Oh? The ultimate guest. Who? Death. You mean... Death. In person. It would never have occurred to me. Such a stunning idea. Death. A party guest. Why not? At Lady Neville's next grand ball. Since her husband died, her life increasingly has been devoted to parties and balls. The leading lords of England, all eager to be invited. She's the wisest and wittiest woman in all London, Lady Neville. And I, David Lorimond, her personal secretary and poet laureate. What a brilliant combination. Strike the king off my list, Lorimond. <laughs> His Majesty off. As you wish. Struck off. And his queen. Caroline. Oh, all that royal Teutonic wit. Boring. Ecclesiastical wit. Hmm. Off the list as well. The Archbishop of Canterbury. All archbishops. And bishops. Yeah, it should improve the general level of dancing. And no George Frederick Handel. No Handel on the harpsichord. Playing for his supper? Oh, his music's marvellous, but I doze. Oh, my dear Flora, this, this is beyond my comprehension, this break with... Look, ask your wisest friends if this is not rash. Inconceivable. Summon them! Thank you for coming, Colonel Compson, Lord and Lady Torrance, Condessa Della Candini. I am to break the news to you. News? <clears throat> For her grand ball to open the season, Lady Neville has struck off all eminences except oh. youth you. Even the king is off oh. the list. But Flora loves court gossip. <laughs> no more. But a ball without... The... And she has had handle. Uh, had handle? Had handle. More and more, my dear friends, I find my parties entertaining everyone but me. But, Flora, darling, the secret of your long life... Not Flora. finding anything dull. Uh, oh, now everything is intolerable. Going to parties to be bored, especially my own. So you intend... Uh, to my next ball, I shall invite the one guest not even I shall find boring. Lady Neville, do tell. The guest of honor shall be death. Himself. <laughs> Charming. <laughs> Death? Oh, Lady Neville, y you are jesting. Death will come when ready. Why hurry him? Oh, Colonel Compson, if Death has plans to take any one of us on the night of my party, he will come, whether invited or not. 
And if he has no such plans... Then I think it will be diverting to have death among us. And if he is in a good humor, offering us a, a trick or two from the beyond. Lady Neville, death is so busy, I doubt he'll accept your invitation. No one has ever refused an invitation of mine. Well, it'll certainly be the unforgettable event of the season. Death, dancing, at Lady Neville's ball. Uh, one difficulty, Lady Neville. Yes, Solomon. Uh, if sending an invitation, uh, how do we address him? Oh. Is Lordship dear? Uh, mm. That puts him only on the level of a Viscount or a mm. Baron. Yes, His Majesty. <gasps> and make him the King's equal. Well, impossible. Couldn't do that. Uh, his Eminence, Death? Ah, David, are ah, so clever with words. Still, uh, how is the invitation to reach Death? Who knows where he lives? Well, he must have a good address. Or does he live among the poor, their only friend? David Lorimond, Death may be forced to deal with poor people, but I hardly think he seeks them out. Death must be a nobleman. Well, the question remains, what street? And name or number of his residence. Well, my hairdresser has a sick child. He was telling me just yesterday. It sounded quite despairing. Send for him, Lorimond. We'll give him the invitation. Daryl, in turn, can give it to death when his eminence comes to take the brat. It must be done conventional. In... I see no other way. If your hairdresser refuses? Why should he? Um, my lady, you don't think it a, a cruel thing to do? Lorimond, get on with it. Fetch him. No fuss. Darrell, the hairdresser, comes as bidden. Sir, Lady Neville's wanting me? Yes. Come in. Sir. But uh, I'm not to do her hair. No. Air of a guest, then? Not a guest. I don't do servants' air. These scissors and pins never touch but ladies' tresses. She had to test me, sir. Scheming to give me a scullery maid to dolly up, and when I does, out I goes. No, Darrell, no. Something missing. A valuable. I wouldn't touch a valuable. Oh, Lorimer, you tracked him down. Daryl, how is your son? Billy? Poorly, ma'am. Ah. Well, when death comes for him, will you please give him this invitation? Death? Lady Neville? Well, you are expecting him, aren't you? At home? Yes, ma'am. Well, why the surprised look? Take the invitation, give it to him. And it's RSVP. Mind you get a reply. This is all, ma'am? Yes, all. But highly important to me. I'll uh, see to it, ma'am. <laughs> Lorimond, I was right as usual. He's happy to do it. Darrell, the hairdresser. After only two days, with a small white envelope. Adam, death gave me this. Oh, nice of you, Daryl. Thank you. Ah. Plain, tasteful calling card. <laughs> Where are my glasses? <laughs> oh, you read it, Lorimer. <clears throat> Death will be pleased to attend Lady Neville's ball. Marvellous. <laughs> Daryl, what's he like? Like? Yes. What is death like? Death? Dorimond, call Colonel Compson from the sunroom. He must see my little triumph. Yes, Lady Neville. Now, Daryl, tell me about his manner, his looks. His dress. Death. Well, it's... It's hard to... Uh... Oh, why, you are being tedious, Daryl. Ah! <laughs> Colonel, see what I have. This mm. communication from 
Guess who? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yes, well, I am surprised. And not surprised. What could Lady Neville not demand and get? Ah, terse, isn't it? Uh, indeed. Uh, but a plain card. No crest, no embossing. I, I find that peculiar. Not as peculiar as the writing. Almost a delicate hand. Refined? Cultivated? Well, there was nothing delicate about the death I saw on the battlefield. Slashing right and left. Black armoured. Stride a black horse. Darrow, how could you be sure it was death? What did death say? Are you trying to make fools of us? My little son. Hardiman, call the footman. But, my lady... Take this insolent fellow, give him a sound whipping, and throw him out into the street. Lady Neville, the poor man, lost his son not an hour ago. And he must learn that I am not to be trifled with. I believe that note is genuine. The ball in death's honor shall take place two weeks from tonight. Let death come as death pleases. But uh, as a skeleton? I am less frightened of death and less certain of its form than I was. I am too old to be afraid of anything that can still use a quill pen to write a letter. Uh, Colonel Thompson, David Lorriman, spread the word to my many friends and urge them to speak to their servants so that all of London may be informed. On this one night... No one in the world will die, for death will be dancing at Lady Neville's ball. Lady Neville's Evening of Evenings. Everyone arrives early. Handsome carriages, fine horses, spilling up the great driveway to the Neville Mansion. Like a grand funeral procession. Appropriate. <laughs> or not. What is fitting when one's honoured guest is death himself? Finest musicians in London. But for all their lovely notes, not a single couple steps onto the dance floor. No young lord begs the honour of the first dance with Lady Neville. Everyone clusters against the walls, in corners. Why haven't they come to my party if they're afraid? I will die sooner than anyone here, but I'm not afraid. Entertaining death excites me. Excites or frightens you? Your scarf is twisted in knots and you cannot sit down without rising again. David, fetch me a glass of red wine. I brought you seven, my lady. One sip and you set it down and forget it. I do. Where is... Death? Where indeed? Far from punctual, I'm afraid. Death will not arrive until midnight. I feel it. Striking midnight. What form will death take? Or what disguise? Don't distress yourself. Death. I'll have my face. It has not come. <laughs> there, 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 my darling. I tell you, nothing to be afraid of. The whole thing's a joke. Oh, <laughs> Death will yes, not sir. be invited again. Lorimer, I am ruined. I wanted to give a ball so grand that those not invited would be publicly shamed. But how could I want to shame even their majesties? This humiliation, 
is my reward. No. I am ruined and I deserve it. For my spite. Don't think that. David, get everyone dancing. Signal the orchestra. Yes. Play! <laughs> Music will drown out all this mockery. Dance with me, David Lorimer. You will not have another chance. I shall never again give a party. I am honored, Lady Neville, to have been invited to this, your last ball. Let them laugh. I did not fear death when they were all trembling. Why should I fear their laughter now? Chill suddenly through the house. Am I late? Oh, I am so sorry. Before the footman can announce her, a lovely young girl in a white dress slips gracefully into the ballroom and glances about, smiling. Can that be she? I must go and greet her. Lady Neville, be careful. Take care. How incredibly youthful, attractive, vibrant. She is. Welcome, my lady. Death? You are Lady Neville. Thank you for inviting me. You honor us. I must apologize, but I'd a long way to come, and my horse is tired. Lady Death, I'll have one of the grooms feed your horses and rub them down. Oh, no. Don't anyone go near my steeds. They're not real horses. And they're very fierce. And you, my lady? Real enough to accept this glass of wine? Thank you. Everyone, upon getting to know me well, finds me very real. I do not doubt it, dear Lady Death. Beautiful house you have. I wish I lived here. I shall one day. You what? Oh, I'm sorry, Lady Neville. I'm cruel without wishing to be... I'm not used to this kind of hospitality. And I do stupid things. Please forgive me. <laughs> you have said nothing untoward. While you are my guest, my house is yours. Oh, what lovely music. I have not danced in such a long time. I fear I've forgotten it. She is surprisingly shy. What is wrong with all my young lords? Why is no one stepping forward to dance with her? You wish me to? No. David, stay by me. I'm near fainting. Is it because she is deaf, that sweet young thing, that none of these gallants will chance a gavotte with her? Oh, Lady Neville, look. Not all your gallants have failed you, Colonel Compson. My dear, exquisite young lady, may I have the honor of this dance? I was hoping you'd ask, Colonel Compson. You know me? I have seen you at a distance. Some brutal encounters I've had to attend. You were magnificent, Colonel. For such a vivacious girl, I am surprised. Graceless dancing. No notion of musical rhythm. The colonel, though, keeping his dignity and humor. But his eyes. Look at his eyes. Oh, Lord. Glazed with fear. Still, I have never seen him dance so well. Inspires his lovely lady into flowing with him. Yes. That comes of having military ideals. Little by little, 
other couples overcome their fear and slip hurriedly onto the floor when death has her back to them. But no brave gallant tries to relieve Colonel Compson of his beautiful partner. Ah, I'm getting the feel of the music now. <laughs> you are. Uh, if it is true... Yes? ...that I saw you at some of those bloody battles, how can you have changed so? How can you be now so lovely? <laughs> I thought that among so many handsome people here tonight, it would be better to be beautiful. Ah. I was afraid of frightening everyone, spoiling the party. Oh, most of your guests, Lady Neville, thought you would be ugly. How about you, David? Knew she would be beautiful. The musicians play on and on. Lady Neville dances with everyone except death's captive Colonel Compson. And now, no woman at the ball dances better than death herself. <laughs> They're jealous of death. Passionately. I am not jealous of her in the least, and not afraid of her. Oh, who will not talk of this night for years to come? Oh, uh, what has happened? Well, the poor musicians cannot play forever. <laughs> Exhausted. Out the window. Look, the night is almost gone. I, too, must go. Oh, no, no. Even though the dancing is done, you must stay a while longer, sweet death. I've had a wonderfully worldly time. I will remember this night forever. Then stay. A while longer. Dear Colonel Compson, my first real gallant. Not tired of me yet? Never. Do stay. Lady Death, stay. So I may dance and talk with you. If Colonel Compson, who plays the harpsichord tolerably, will play... Such gallants I have. A soldier and a poet. Oh, to be a woman. But this romancing comes too late. I must go. My husband and I think you're charming. Beautiful, please stay. Ah, gracious Lady Torrance. Terrified of me all evening. Clinging tightly to your husband. No longer. And the Contessa della Candini... Standing well back, disapproving. Do you want me to stay? To be one of your friends? I disapprove no longer. Nor do I envy your beauty. You are a true lady. And you? And you? And you? All of you? Do you want me to live among you? To be deaf no more? Yes, yes, yes. yes. You want me to visit your homes, come to your parties, wear the gowns you wear, say the clever things you say, and will one of your gallants marry me, the rest of you dance at my wedding? Oh, yes, stay, become one of us. Be certain, be sure, all of you. If one of you says, no, go away, then I must leave and never return. Do all of you want me? Yes. 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 We are dull and stupid and grow old uselessly. Stay with us, Lady Death. Yes. Very well. I shall stay. I will be Death no more, but a woman. There is a price to pay. There is always a price. One of you must become deaf in my place. <laughs> there must forever be death in the world. Will anyone choose, any of you, willingly, to be deaf in my place so that I might be a woman? No one will offer? Then I must choose. And that is just. For that's how I became death. I never wanted to be this phantom. It makes me so happy that you want me to become worldly, mortal, a woman. I've searched a long time for people fond of me. Now I have only to choose someone to replace me, and it is done. 
The Contessa della Candini. Me? Me? <laughs> no. Death's vocation is beyond you. Oh. Hmm. And not Colonel Compson, of His Majesty's Household Cavalry. Too kind to become deaf. The task, too cruel to him. The Colonel himself wants to die so badly. Lady Death, must you be so shrewd, so cautious? Not David Lorimond, the poet. No? You know so little of life. And I'm too attracted to you. You, you hurt me. And quicken me. Lord and Lady Torrance. Ah, you care too much for each other to take pride in being deaf. Ah, you are less capricious, my lady, than we thought. I was far from your age, Lady Neville, when I became deaf. What must it be like to be your age eventually? I have been this old mortal far too long. Lady Neville? The ideal one. I choose Lady Neville. I am honoured. But is there no one more worthy? No one. No one so weary of being a human. No one who knows better how meaningless it is to be alive. No one else. Certainly not here. With the power to treat life. The life of your hairdresser's child, say, is the meaningless thing it is. Death has a heart, but so empty. And your heart, Lady Neville, empty as a dry riverbed. Not always. But yes, since widowhood. You will be content as death, more than I. For I was very young when I became death. Still life hungry. But you are aged and close to the end. Death comes toward Lady Neville, lightly, her deep eyes wide and full of the morning's red sun. Everyone else moves back. Lady Neville, pale, thin hands clenched, watches Death come toward her with graceful, dancing steps. Lady Neville, we must kiss each other. That is the way I became death. Quickly. Quickly. Oh, I cannot wait to be alive again. <laughs> you may not like it after a while. Perhaps not. I'll not be as beautiful as I am. And people will not love me as they do now. But I will be a loved and loving woman. For a while. Then die as humans die. I have done my penance. What penance? What was it you did? Why did you become death? I don't remember. And you too will forget. In time. Lady Death is smaller, slighter than Lady Neville. And so much younger. Perhaps like a daughter Lady Neville never had. Death lifts her head to kiss the old lady's cheek. You will still be beautiful when I am ugly. Be kind to me then. I promise. Lady Neville's last human act. With dry, cracked lips, she kisses the soft, sweet-smelling cheek of young Lady Death. Since her husband died, her life increasingly has been devoted to parties and balls, the leading lords of England all eager to be invited. She's the wisest and wittiest woman in all London, Lady Neville. And I, David Lorimond, her personal secretary and poet laureate. What a brilliant combination. Strike the king off my list, Lodiman. His Majesty off. As you wish. Struck off. And his queen. 
Caroline? Oh, that royal Teutonic wit. Boring. Ecclesiastical wit. Hmm. Off the list as well. The Archbishop of Canterbury. All archbishops. And bishops. Yeah, it should improve the general level of dancing. And no George Frederick Handel. No Handel on the harpsichord? Playing for his supper? Oh, his music's marvellous, but I doze. Oh, my dear Flora, th- th- this is beyond my comprehension, th- this break with... Look, ask your wisest friends if this is not rash. Inconceivable. Summon them! <laughs> falling, lost in the listening distance, as dark locks in. (laughs) Nightfall. Good evening. Tonight, we would request your attendance at a formal ball given to honor the most important guest of all. The setting is London, the year 1750. The play, based on a short story by Peter S. Beagle and dramatized by Len Peterson, is called The Guest of Honor. Parties. Parties. I'm so bored. Parties. But it's expected, Lady Neville. But I open the season with a gala that leaves everyone gasping. Lorimond, you're the poet. Thank you for coming, Colonel Compson, Lord and Lady Torrance, Condessa Delacantini. I am to break the news to you. News? <clears throat> for her grand ball to open the season, Lady Neville has struck off all eminences except oh. you few. Even the king is off oh, the list. But Flora loves court gods. <laughs> no more. But a ball without... The... And she has had handle. Uh, had handle? Had handle. More and more, my dear friends, I find my parties entertaining everyone but me. But Flora, darling, the secret of your long life... Not has finding always... anything dull. Uh, oh, now everything is intolerable. Going to parties to be bored... Especially my own. So you intend... uh, To my next ball, I shall invite the one guest not even I shall find boring. Lady Neville, do tell. The guest of honor shall be death himself. (laughs) Charming. (laughs) Death? Lady Neville, you are jesting. Death will come when ready. Why hurry him? Oh, Colonel Compson, if death has plans to take any one of us on the night of my party, he will come, whether invited or not. And if he has no such plans? Then I think it will be diverting to have death among us. And if he is in a good humor, offering us a a trick or two from the beyond. Lady Neville, death is so busy, I doubt he'll accept your invitation. No one has ever refused an invitation of mine. Well, it'll certainly be the unforgettable event of the season. Death dancing at Lady Neville's ball. Uh, One difficulty, Lady Neville. Yes, Solomon. If sending an invitation, uh, how do we address him? Ah. Is Lordship dear? Uh, Mm. That puts him only on the level of a Viscount or a Baron. Yes, his majesty. (gasps) And make him the king's equal. Impossible. Couldn't do that. Uh, his eminence, death? Ah, David, are ah, so clever with words. Still, uh, how is the invitation to reach death? Who knows where he lives? Well, he must have a good address. Or does he live among the poor, their only friend? David, inspire me. Oh, let's see. Um, poison champagne every fifth glass. Ah. <laughs> My lady, you'd be the talk of London Don't and Edinburgh. Yes, Lorimond. Now, who? Might I invite who wouldn't bore me silly? Hmm. The king, of course, and the <laughs> archbishop. Georgie Porgy, when he goes on and on and on in his German strudel English about his mistresses and his money, my feet go to sleep. As for the archbishop of Canterbury, all that talk about altar boys. But you have inspired me, Lorimond. Someone I'd not thought of. Oh? The ultimate guest. Who? Death. You mean 
death in person. It would never have occurred to me such a stunning idea. Death, a party guest. Why not? At Lady Neville's next grand ball. <laughs> <laughs>